Okay, um, I made a video some time ago called the Loosh Farm. And in there I said that there was another lecture that I didn't have time to do in that talk. It was about um, how uh, Earth became a fallen planet. Fallen means we are on a planet that is hmm, not of our kind. It is a hmm, it's a factory farm. So if you think of um, the factory farms where enormous numbers of animals are grown for food it is a not it is in our nature to do that so that we can have a lot of food cheap but animals in factory farms that is not their natural environment you all know the natural environment is natural fields and that's what the natural place is for the animals. And the same thing for us. We are living in a world that is not our natural environment because we are being farmed you'll have to listen to my first talk the loosh farm uh, to get more information on that but i'm not going to redo that lecture i'm trying to give you some more information so the planet that we live on is generally speaking a planet where humans cannot live in their natural environment and their natural environment is nothing like what we experience here. Nothing. We have a, a certain amount of inflexibility because we are mm, given to believe that we are these meat suits. And we are given to believe that the minds that we have and the thoughts that are going on in these minds are us. It's not true. Everything about planet Earth is a factory farm. And we are the ones being farmed so that we can be food. And that is the sorriest state of affairs. And that is why I say we are a fallen race, because we don't know who we are. And therefore, we are not living as we are meant to. Now, the talk is supposed to be, how did this all happen? It happened many generations ago, and it is not biblical. What happened was a lot of hard to understand things came together to entrap us. And entrapped we became. And I've read a lot of different stories that might shed light on this, but pretty much all of them are incorrect. Madame Blavatsky um, late 1800s said there was a, 
I don't know, maybe seven root races. No, there's nothing correct in Madame Blavatsky's root races. Um, the ideas of our science that we evolved from apes is incorrect. The idea that we were angels and we rebelled against God and fell to earth and lost our angelic abilities is incorrect. There's a million stories about, but they're all incorrect. The correct story is we are here now and regardless of how you want to mythologize how we got here we are still facing the fact that we don't know what we are and the ones that farm us do know what we are and they are farming us because we are enabled which is kind of like unable and enable rolled together in one word. We are unwell, people. It doesn't take too many years before we start getting really sick. And the reason we get sick is because there is no instrument here to keep us going. And if there was an instrument to keep us going, it might help us continue to be human. But that's not who we really are. So there's many stories about a new matrix being uh, installed and us migrating from what's known as the 3D matrix to the 5D matrix. Because you have to have a matrix in order to keep your human form. It's not really a good idea because we are not human. It is pretty much not too much different than the old 3D matrix, this new one. Because it still continues to agree with the lie that we are human. We are not. We are what we are and we are not human. And our matrixes that we live in lie to us and tell us we are human biological creatures and that is all incorrect so will it help you to know what you are well I've told you many times on these channels my Instagram channel my YouTube channel that we are awareness and we have nothing to do with Christian gods Jesus, we have nothing to do with Buddhist philosophies either. We have nothing to do with Hindu philosophies. More and more, I've come to the conclusion that every single thing that we are given as an option to choose from is a lie. And the lies are all stacked together interrelated so when you first come into looking for existing information on what we are it is a lie there's so many lies it's unbelievable but you know the early lies are well you know different groups of humans develop these different kind of religious ideas or philosophies or even scientific research to come to understand how we got to be they're all lies and they're designed for you to either buy into one of these lies or uh, to go searching and go searching and never finding anything that answers the question 
But I told you the answer. We are awareness. Why are we appearing to one another as if we are human formed biological meat? It is simply to keep the lie perpetuating on and on. The entities that want us to think that we are humans do it so that we are unable to get back to our original state, which is awareness. What were we aware of before we were aware of the idea that we are humanoids? It's not known. But at some particular point, we were not human, but we were not stupid things. We were entrapped into these matrix things that give us the illusion of being a human. And so that is what people believe. And even when I tell you, you are pure awareness and you have nothing to do with this human body, nothing whatsoever, you are nothing to do with the human form. Whether it's pretty or ugly, male or female, young or old, dead or alive, it has nothing to do with you. And that is the trap of it all. Because... The awareness says that we are human, and thus we uh, get involved with human activities. We don't even get involved with human activities. Everything to do with the human world is nothing to do with us, but it is fed to our awareness as if it is. So if we were to escape from... the human body and the human world, what could we experience? It's possible that we might be more and more like wizards. And perhaps we could wizard our own kind of world, completely different than what we're used to here on Earth. The creative spark that creates the matrix is primarily nothing to do with us. It was there and we got trapped in it. Are we actually creating the matrix? Some people say we do. We create it uh, with our thoughts. But we are not our thoughts. So how can we be using thoughts to um, create this matrix when we are not the thoughts? And we do not create thoughts. Thoughts come from what people say uh, is known as the source field. So the source of thoughts is a source field. And we're not the source field. And people say, well, if you change your vibration, you access different parts of the source field and that's what happens. Not really because we don't change our vibration, despite what everybody keeps talking about. And even here on these channels, I talk from time to time about the scale of human consciousness. But these are all really not true. They are designed to keep you thinking you are human and that you are an actor able to affect the matrix by doing something. But you are not a doer. You are simply aware of this great show going on and you think you're doing things because it is designed to make you think that and the thinking that you think you're doing is all fed to you by the matrix if you were outside of the matrix would you end up creating a matrix could be i can't tell you because i haven't been outside of the matrix but i am going to tell you that the matrix was not designed by us. It was designed by something else to entrap us. And knowing this 
so far hasn't helped me get out of the matrix or change the matrix. As much as people say, you create your own reality, you don't. Because you are simply aware, you are a receiver of all this information. Somebody else might say, well, God is doing it. Well, if you want to call the matrix God, go ahead. But I don't see the matrix as God, because to me, God is a short form for good. And this matrix is full of nothing that I would consider good. Someone says a little bit, not even a little bit. Because you don't have anything here that is yours. It is all provided by the thing that entraps you. You might call it God and hope that it's going to be good to you, but it ain't. All you have to do is look at human history and see humans are not treated well in this matrix and never have been. So whatever this source field is, it is not benevolent to us. In search of a way to explain it in another term, I'm going to continue to tell you your insignificance is what they want to tell you over and over again. Celebrities are significant. Sports people, you know, that play professional sports are significant. Politicians are significant. Your boss at work is significant. But to other people, your boss is insignificant. It's all upside down. Because the truth is, you are majorly significant. You are majorly significant to yourself. And you're majorly significant to me. Because we are of the same kind. And that's true that I do find uh, people in this matrix to be exceptionally difficult, even though they're important to me. It's not theoretical. They are very important to me, but they are very difficult because they are so locked in their skin suit humanity and everything that goes along with it. So it is very much like the Matrix movies. Most people in the Matrix don't want to leave the Matrix because they don't even understand that they are trapped by the Matrix. And unplugging people from the Matrix is, well, you would think after watching those Matrix movies that people might get the idea that it was real, but no. People go to sleep as a human form and they wake up in the morning and they have a human form. And this is the basis of why people are not terribly interested in escaping the matrix because um, it just seems totally normal for them. But it is not normal. And our capabilities as awareness are unknown to us. And our own creative abilities are unknown to us. It keeps coming back to, well, maybe we did create this matrix, but I cannot believe it. And some of the people say, Earth is a school. No, it is not. It is a trap. Is it a soul trap? I don't know if you want to call our awareness a soul. It's too religious. Just awareness. Some ancient sages said we are um, pure consciousness if we can strip away everything else. Are we able to create what we want to experience? Some people continue to say that, and yet, and they'll offer you courses and books on that, but it doesn't work. They'll tell you elaborate stories of other people that it worked for, 
and it doesn't work for the average person. So it's a lie designed to make you give up your time and money to chase these stories down. And it's very disappointing when you finally come to the conclusion that every one of these stories is staring you in the face and saying, sorry, it's not true. The Tibetan Buddhists say, after you uh, drop dead in your human form, uh, you go into what they call a bardo, which is another matrix. And after maybe 45 days in the bardo, uh, you may reincarnate into this matrix as a human or as an animal. And that simply means what? It gives you a chance to become enlightened. You are already light. What kind of light are you? You are the light of awareness. So there is nothing for you to gain by following these Tibetan Buddhists who seem so wise and say, be kind to others. Well, that's pretty much what you're taught in kindergarten. So do you need to go all the way to Tibet to learn to be kind to one another? No. But there's a certain mystique to the ideas that are presented to you by foreign cultures because, you know, they're not my culture and maybe they know something that I don't. No, it's not going to get you anywhere. And some of these Tibetans apparently have got heightened awareness of things. So that part of their teachings are useful because if you can heighten your awareness, you are going to be able to understand what I'm telling you. Accessing uh, the creative powers for things that you want is often said, well, you have to control the thoughts in your head. In my experience, um, the way you control the thoughts in your head is to do the same thing you did yesterday. So you get the same thoughts in your head. In other words, you go to this job and you get very familiar with the job and the thoughts in your head tell you how to do the job. That's not a really good way to be. Some other people say, well, what you need to do is have reminders of things that you want to have for yourself. So you're looking at them all the time. And sometimes I talk about that as being a good idea. Nevertheless, It's really not a solution because it doesn't really bring you the things, you know, that you're reminding yourself you need. As much as people say it does, it doesn't. And I've been here for 55 years playing the game of trying out what people say works. And I've tried and tried and I'm going to debunk them all and say they don't work. These people are big liars and they're doing it because they want money. Because in the end, in this matrix, having money gets you the things that you can get with money, which is pretty much anything you want in this matrix. So does that mean you should chase money? Um, well, the problem with chasing money is it doesn't solve the problem of uh, escaping from the cycling of being born as a human and dying as a human, going through the bardo, and maybe coming back as a duck or an insect for a lifetime or two, 
who is running this reality matrix and the Bardo reality matrix? Who is running it? Somebody might say, well, no one's running it. It just runs itself. And I don't buy that. There is something that is running this reality, and it's not us humans, and it's not our awarenesses. It is something that has entrapped us here, and it's very happy that we are entrapped here because it is feeding on us. It is giving us things that it wants to give us, and it is taking away from us our freedom. Are they black magicians? Well, I can't give you any words to tell you what they are. But they are here, and they are controlling us. And we keep looking for heroes to come and rescue us from the black magicians that are doing black magic to keep us here. And... Um, I've heard many stories about these ones coming to help us, but every time someone says it's going to happen, it never happens. But the story continues. Endless stories about the rapture, one way or another, another rapture. There's no rapture. There's no rapture. Just endless stories, and they just keep changing the dates when the rapture never happens. In search of anything to give you, I always say meditate and watch yourself from the inside of your body. That's how you really learn, is to be inside your body. You could be lying on a couch or sitting in a chair or lying in your bed or you could be sitting out underneath a tree but watch the thoughts that are going on in your head. Watch the feelings that are going on inside this body. Watch because your awareness is the thing that watches. Disassociate yourself from those things that appear to be moving your body and doing things with your body. If you have impulses to move your body, don't follow those impulses. What do I mean? Well, you have a thought that you want a piece of cake. And you're at your designated meditation period for an hour and six minutes into your meditation you have a thought that says i need to go downstairs and get that piece of chocolate cake you're in a meditation period you must ignore that persistent intention that it seems to be you but it isn't the intention to go and get the cake and break your meditation because you're not going to learn that way so you're going to feel the hunger in your belly. And you're going to have these feelings like you really need to get up and go get the cake. But you are going to sit for an hour. And what's going to happen to the feelings of the hunger? They might get really strong. But then you're going to remember, you know, I just ate something before I started my meditation. And in a normal period, um, I don't get hungry an hour after I eat something. So something else is giving me these feelings of being hunger. And it's not my body. Something else is giving me hunger pangs. And the more days that you meditate, the more you will discover that there are things being fed to you that are not your body. 
but they seem to be your body saying, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, I need to pee, I need to poop. I need a breath of fresh air. I'm too hot. I'm too cold. These are, let's call it the matrix. Are they other kinds of entities that want you to do that? Let's just call them all part of the matrix. And when you meditate for a solid hour and you'll see these things come and go, because sometimes the hunger will get very strong or the urge to go pee will be very strong, but you don't act on it. And sometimes what happens is these feelings go away or maybe they go down to a lower level. And the more you meditate and let go of acting on all of these impulses that come to you, the more you will discover how many times the matrix wants you to do things. The matrix is about mind control. It wants to control you in your so-called human form. It wants to brainwash you with advertising and following the herd mentality. So while you are in the matrix, if you spend a lot of time watching what happens with you and your body from the inside and not acting on these impulses, it's a huge wake up because you see how much the matrix is attempting to manipulate you. And the more you sit with this and watch it, the more astonished you become. And then you wonder, why does the matrix want me to think I need to pee? when I don't? Why does it make me think that I'm hungry when I'm not? And then you can become more and more independent of the mind control and the body control of the matrix. And then the matrix gets angry at you because if you don't buy into the regular ways it controls you, then it does get very aggressive with you. And it will show you things that it can do. If you don't voluntarily want to get up off the couch, then it might start shaking your body. As if you're a voodoo zombie. And it might create characters that you start hearing in your mind that are, you know, wanting to control you, telling you in words. They'll, some of the, the creatures